It's Gaz's Slam Rare Journey, part four. Here we are, back at 15 Kitty Wake Close. It's now 1983, and there's going to be big, big changes for Gary and his love of Lambrettas. I sold my GP200, my lovely Punjabi scooter. I was missing it somewhat, but I still had my cut down, which also was now my daily ride to work and back. I had purchased this year one more Lambretta, an LI150 I sprayed white, and took it down the road because it was just a 150, didn't like it, and I sold it. So there I was stuck with just my one Lambretta. And now the gang was starting to split up. Jamie this year, he decided to go up to Hull. He just up sticks, sold his scooter to Matty, and he left. And this is most probably the last picture of him with us up at the Blunderstone Plough in early 1983 it might be at late 1982. Also, John Sharman grew a gay tash to go with his ex-bike and he got engaged and married and we didn't see any more of him. Also, Phil sold his scooter to one of the Boulevard girls, Liz, after he'd had his sprayed a horrible poo chocolate brown and here's a silly photograph of his poo brown scooter. Who would back then? So he bought a Morris Minor car, so he was gone. Who was going to be next? Well, that would be me. We got out of the skinhead scene because it got quite racist and we were not into that. I grew my hair, as did Phil. This is most probably one of the last photographs of me and Phil down in Brixton outside a pub because they wouldn't let us in because we were white. Oh yes, that was true, but that's another story another day. We were at a CND rally, we saw Hazel O'Connor, Madness, the new formed Style Council. All the groups had changed, the scene was different. The only constant was the Lambretta. Everything else had changed. So I decided, like the others, I sold my beloved, cut down, that had gone, I'd sold it to crisps. And I heard about six months later, it just sat in someone's back garden after the throttle cable snapped just rusting away. Anyway, I bought a Cortina Mark III. And funny enough, Gary Sharman, who's now a prominent mod in Alton Broad, his dad sprayed it. And so my journey had changed into something else. Crispy bought all my stuff. Everything had changed though. We'd all moved on, we'd grown up. We were all turning 20 years old. What an age, 20. And I had just joined another group of people called the Wild Bunch. And they were called the Wild Bunch for a reason. And there I met an old friend from my Skinner days, David Mars. And there the friendship continued through the scooter scene, but in a different form. Phil turned up once in around about 1986. And that was it. I didn't see any of the scooter crowd for a few years. But then... In 1990, it all changed again. again. So look out for episode four. But right now, we go back to Gary's memories in 2024, and we're gonna start again with Duncan and Gary's Sunday workshop, and a few more memories, and a few more silly shirts. Coo Duncan and Gary's Sunday workshop. Cool. Right. So here we are on Duncan Gary's Sunday workshop. Gary's not here. Yay! This is his engine I'm just having a play with, checking port times and stuff. But Duncan, yeah. I'm oh. here! Woohoo! Fuck Duncan! This. Fuck! Duncan, look! Oh no. We're, we're twins! You're wearing the pyjamas I bought you. Don't judge us. Don't judge us. Whoops. You know they were pyjama bottoms and tops? I did a bit tight to sleep in. I've got the same on. So here we are. Did you do the here we are in Duncan and Darry's Harry yeah, Sandry workshop? Sort of. We are, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. What have you been doing, Duncan? Putting your engine together. You <laughs> have, hey! Tell them yeah. what it is. What is the engine? What is the engine? Lambretta. <laughs> well, of course it's a bloody Lambretta, you scruffy, scruffy oh. Herbert. Small block. 
Imola 186, I think it is. Standard uh, 58107 crank. LI 150 hang box, on. which is but good. Before you, because you're wearing your Scary and oh, I'm wearing... Oh, sorry, I can't I think, see standard. Hang on. Click to music. <laughs> Carry on. Okay. It's actually not a standard crank. It's a Mercure. It's one of the original ones, which is a good one. I not, did not know that. Oh, yeah. Tell me. Oh, well, cool. Not cheap one. Anyway, LI 150 box. Put this in. Bit of an odd bitch shimmered it up, so I actually had to put a... <laughs> I just put a 0.5 shim on the lay shaft before I installed it to the bearing because I couldn't get I couldn't get him to fucking shim up properly. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing very well for a distracted yeah, man right. behind you. But now it's mid. Right. It mid the, the, the shimming is 0.15 I think it is the shim. So, so you can go from point you can go from point, so, 0 0.7 to 0 0.3 and weigh 0 0.15 which is fucking really good so if i'd have done this myself which i was going to do originally i'd have fucked it up wouldn't i purely because the you shim was wrong yeah. and i wouldn't have known until later uh, basically it's courses for horses <laughs> oh, what the fuck that horse come from? Here. so anyway what else have you been doing in duncan well, and gary sunday workshop I've today got, well no i've got a bit more to show you All right. This is the original Imola shim. Uh, shim. Fucking get the shims out. <laughs> Who They're the shimming shim? around. Who let the shims out? Yep. Sorry, that's. Who let the shims right. out? Ooh. It is original Imola. Which I can see Gary through there, the daylight. Well, I can see you through my lens. Yeah, but uh, I thought I'd be kind to Gary and give him V44. If I take my socket out that I've been pissing around with, yes, just you hold it up. Look, look. Oh, oh, perfection, mate. Just have to perfection. do a bit of adrenaline. Yeah, you do and I've already put the socket, socket in just to hold the barrel up because I'm going to silicon it up and put it together. There's just one other thing. Oh. I'll get it because your knees are playing up. Yeah. His knees still playing up. There you go. You don't have to bend over, mate. Ah! So this is a scooter. Uh, this is going on my GP, and it was messed up, eh? The thread. Now, if you remember back in the old days, guys, we would just whack that through, wouldn't we? So the end had all beveled over, and it's now smoothie, smoothie, smoothies. <laughs> and it wasn't smooth before. And Duncan had this little gizmo initially that we uh, used, and then he re-threaded it and now done it everything. Is and now it's all good. Mate. And it is. It, ah, I like that. I like that. Beautiful, mate. Now, anyway, uh, we've been. I just had a look in your fridge, and you've been drinking. Love. You need. You need to see uh, Alcoholics Anonymous because it's nine in the morning. I know you've had two beers. But look. And it's low. You have. You've lost some weight. <coughs> you've lost some weight, mate. So that's low it. In, that's it. Low carpet. So that's it in Duncan and Gary Sunday workshop. And we're nearly twins today. Except I'm the better looking one. <laughs> Don't you ever forget that. Alright, that's enough. That's enough. Fucking mobs. Watch out. So I've had to go around Duncan's now, guys. I was talking in the last one about this. Do you remember back in the day, we'd whack a hammer on there, wouldn't we, Duncan? <laughs> and knock it out well the ends all just beveled over so Duncan's just got a nice little repair kit to fix that now while we're here if you're wondering about the engine I know you're not but I am I sort of figured courses for horses when it comes to the engine now I know I'm competent but I didn't feel the confidence in me if that makes sense to build it so in the end I've got Duncan to have a play with it so he's put a lay shaft and gearbox in. Now, Gun can just explain the gearbox. I'd have screwed it up, wouldn't I? It's an LI150 box. Great, really good box. But the problem was, in this casing, 
the leash I've pulled down that far the box was down too low by the time you pull your tree up the gear start to mesh so I've actually put a 0.5 spacer on the lay shaft with this gearbox out of the bearing now it's fucking mint so basically I would have put it together as I think it would have come apart and basically when we would have kicked it over it wouldn't have connected the gears would have just the it'll, Christmas tree and everything would have been out of sync so folks that's why courses for horses listen to that voice in your head so I'm letting Duncan build the engine I think that's a better deal because that's got to do about 5000 K ish on this engine once it's together that's if we decide to leave it as it is so he's got all the bits and pieces in there and we're just fixing the scoot rs as i say don't be ashamed to let someone else fix your scooter if they're more competent than you and you can just sit there and drink their beer more <laughs> low carb yeah now i'm doing some editing yeah, I'm interrupting now. It's the bear and all that. There's a lot goes on in this heading. But listen. So I've still got the t-shirt as well. Now, with this memory, uh, this goes back to my cut down that I got off Richard Tyrrell. It wasn't a cut down that L.I series 2 that I cut down and in 1982 it turned into this so uh, that was inspired by this song basically and I had the t-shirt and I saw the group at the gala it was probably one of the best gigs I'd ever been to so Gary whatever you're doing you can get back to doing it now and I'll get back to my editor and, and uh, I'll have my beer carry on Gary Well, thanks, Gary. Now, talking about my T-shirt, I'm actually wearing the T-shirt I had when I was 19 years old. It sort of still fits. Now, here's another one, uh, another memory that I loved. That was a bloody amazing gig. He was a complete knobhead. I did get to see him again in 2007, but this is 1982. And Max Blodge came on stage, right? He literally came on stage pissed as a bloody new four piece band and he started singing a song it weren't even two it didn't even get to two points lager and a packet of crisp please he he literally threw a pig's head on stage and said this is the local constabulary policeman and everyone started kicking that around and anyone that knows me i'm predominantly a vegetarian and i'm like yeah even phil and chris were like yeah that's a bit much he sung half a song he was so pissed he couldn't put the words together. The lead guitarist next to him got his guitar and smashed it in, literally smashed it up on stage and said, you're fucked up another gig, and he left. And that was it. So we had the outcasts on, and we had the addicts who were the top guys just as well. Addicts were okay, I can't really rem remember much about them. It was mainly about that. So the t-shirt. As I say, this was my beloved t-shirt for years, even when I went uh, self-employed metal polishing, I'd still see clients, you know, oh hello, where my dad said, uh, I think you shouldn't rashly be wearing that, because it says, I hate, I don't know if you can see it, it says, I, I hate people on the back as well, while I'm trying to get work in. So I went through a few more memories, this is going to Richard, uh, the Nomads, never worn it. I've got so many of these. This is going to one of the former broadsmen. He might be a broadsman again, so I'm getting them packed up ready. I've got so many that have never, ever been used. I mean, they look brand spank new. So, in my Lambretta journey, when I do this tour around New Zealand, uh, there's a little bit of New Zealand, uh, I am going to put them on eBay and sell a lot and they can go all into charity. There's a couple I'm going to keep. I, although it's got a scooter club, West Riding scooters, but Easter 1982. I'm going to do a little separate funny on that one. All right, I'm going to have a little, because I've got some good memories of that Easter rally. A lot happened there. Anyway, that's sort of it at the moment. Now, bear with me. I'm editing some of my stuff for my Lambrea journey. You couldn't make this stuff up. Matchbox, him. 
let's go and look at that photograph that's on my wall in my garage dash bar I was asked this is true story I was asked hey come over to Yarmouth there's gonna be a little you know teddy boys and uh, we're gonna have a little rug so me and Andrew Snell got in his little mini yeah, little mini well his mum's little mini and we went over to Great Yarmouth which is about eight mile, nine mile, ten mile away for us. And I can't believe it. And see them glasses? He had a pair of glasses on just like that. And we're outside this record store. We didn't know it was going to be him and all these supposed teddy boys. And literally, I was standing with, with this other skin anyway. They're coming, they're coming. And it's Limu arrived, right? So it's Limu turned up. They got out, and I'm like, you, you get starstruck. Fucking hell, it's Matchbox. This massive skinhead went straight over to him and went whack. Fucking glasses split in two. Fucking nose just went. And uh, I'm like, he just hit the lead singer from Matchbox. I just couldn't believe it. And me and Andrew went into the record site. There's Andy Records or something like that. But it's in Great Yarmouth on a corner somewhere near the market. And I couldn't believe when we were in there, we were like, all, when you see the photograph, they're all doing this. Fucking hated that shit. Yeah, Smashbox. Right now, that's Smashbox number 30 on the charts. And anyway, so they're in there, and they're wanting to sign records from all the fans. There weren't no fans there. If you look at the photograph, it's all skinheads. What I didn't like was they were going, Seagull, Seagull, fucking numb nuts, fucking brain dead. I know, I know. But... We, you can see us just at the back, look. You can just see us. And us just like, fucking Jesus, man. And everyone was nicking records. I mean everyone. And it was just two police officers in the store. And they still, I remember speaking to them. I can't remember what I was talking about. But I just remember them just walking off going, you know. And I just, what a fun, fun morning, I know that was. And we're going, me and Andrew in the car, and back in his little mum's mini, the little orange mini, and I just thought, fuck, I love being in the scooter scene. That was just so funny. Really, that was a very, very funny morning out, when we just thought we were going to get in a ruck with a few teddy boys, and it was the band, the matchbox of all bloody people. T-shirt from the early 80s. Uh, why am I wearing it right now? Because I used this so many times in the 80s as a prop. And here's me with my old bestie, Roy Bales. We grew up on the Burnt Hill Estate together. He was a couple of streets down with me. Look, there you can see the trousers. There you are. And they're hanging up there. So, uh, and there's a picture of me at Snetton uh, Scoot Racing. And there is the image, the patch. Also, I'm just going to briefly mention this, look, this mirror. This mirror has been on my prized possession. How it survived through the years, I have no idea. I got this in 1980, and as you can see, it's got the original six before Chaz Smash got involved, or Carl Smith, or Cathal, as he's called now. What a prat. Cathal, someone or other, Joseph, whatever. So, uh, also, I'm going to mention this. Why have I got this? So, this is an interesting, quick little story. Again, going back to Snetterton. Uh, we went to the races for the day and a couple of these guys on Vespers came along. I think his name was Sean. Now, see that blue paint, right? That is because the guy hit me right in the back and pushed the frame into the back wheel. I had to literally prize it out as I uh, prized my hands out of my pockets to give him a slap. No, I didn't. I was just too nice. I was too concerned about the scooter. So I kept the old original aluminium sign and you can see there, look, it says crisps of lower stuffed. So still got the sign. Well, here we are back again on my little board. Uh, now, important people here realistically is Graham Gumby, obviously Crispy, John Shum with his gay tash. There's Phil with a little silly thing on his head. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, well, I forget his name, right in a carvery, I think. Uh, there's me, obviously. They're the main ones. One, two, three, four, five. There's Matty and a couple of others. That was taken at the Blunderstone Plough. Most probably one of the last photographs taken up there. Not the, but one of the last. Uh, we we sort of split up somewhere later. We got out of the scene. But I'll just share this, look. I did a little 
when we were skins. Play that now. We live and die a Friday night. So, that's oh, that t-shirt from two, 2000, so 24 years ago. But here's a photograph of me wearing that same t-shirt when I was 19 year old at Skegness Scooter Rally, when I was 100% skinhead. And here's also the other picture of me. At, there's my boots taking a picture of my scooter. So I've got about five t-shirts I've kept. This one I did like. Uh, there's an interesting story attached to why I never got to go and see the exploited because I was seeing a skinny girl at the time. She was from Norwich. Uh, all sorts of hassle, all sorts of things went down. And I didn't go because the word went out. If I went, I'd get my head kicked in by the Norwich skins. Hey, happy days, eh? So that would be it. I'm not going to be able to do any more until I've done more on the scooter. The chances are the next thing you'll see is the engine put in and that actually might be part of Duncan and Gary's Sunday workshop. But the memories, all of the stuff I've still got. I'll just share one with, more with you. Fellow Lumi, we'll get to the Magnetos later on. That, funny enough, was on my bedroom wall. I haven't got a picture of it. But that was on my bedroom wall from 1980 to 1984, I believe, yes, 1984. And if you imagine this wall in my bedroom, the other side was the workshop, realistically, my dad's garage. So that hung on there. So you can see it was originally a Debbie Harry picture. And then it evolved as time went on. You've got Bad Manners, even Toya Wilcox and a few other people. And it just went through the evolution of punk, the Blitz, Army Life, all that other stuff. I hate people, of course, up your bum with Peter and the Test Two Babies. Blitz saw them, funny enough, Blitz. I'll show some photos now. Me, Crispy Phil, and then a, a girlfriend, uh, Tracy Merritt, we went in our Hillman Imp, which is another interesting story for another day, but it's not Lambretta, is it? But that was a bloody good gig that night, and they were awesome. We will finish right here, right now, as we do lead into, in the next video, the 1990s and a new era in my scooter and days. We live and die a Friday night Off to the pally and have a fight Dance to reggae most of the night When we were skins